Hello everybody, you're welcome back again to the Reggae Appreciation Society. One of the biggest ironies in the world of entertainment is that some of the most talented artists are also the most troubled and their personal demons either completely overshadow their gifts or keep them from reaching the heights they're supposed to reach. The subject of today's video is another prime example. Jakio is a living paradox of breathtaking brilliance and a flawed product of a toxic and hard childhood, without a doubt, just one of the most talented Jamaican singers of his generation. Some music critics have described him as being the possessor of the greatest voice ever given to a human being. In addition to his raw gifts, he also has smooth swagger and an imperious air about his performances not seen since the heydays of Gregory Isaacs. He was part of the squad that made up the Rasta Renaissance of the mid to late 1990s along with his childhood friend Sisla Kalonji. Blessed with an unbelievably hypnotic voice and natural charm, he was certain to be among the leading lights of the movement and was headed for roaring success when trouble with the law at the age of 19 sent his life on a dramatic and unfortunate turn via a lengthy prison sentence which he served and emerged from triumphantly. But rather than the end, it seemed to be just the start of a series of legal and personal troubles which culminated in arrest and prison sentencing for a violent crime, one which has the potential to either make or break Jack Cure. Let's take a look at how Jack Cure's legal troubles kept him from becoming one of the greatest artists of his generation. He was born Secretary Alcock on October the 11th, 1978, in the parish of Hanover. When he was very young, his mother moved him and his siblings to the tough neighborhood of Flankers in Montego Bay. His life at home was quite tough as his mother struggled to raise him and his other siblings under the same roof as their abusive stepfather. He would develop a bad temper as a child and often got into fights with other boys in his neighborhood. However, he began to use music as an outlet for his inner rage and would sneak out of his bedroom window at night to watch local stage shows including the annual Reggae Sunsplash at Montego Bay. At those shows, he saw great icons like the Burning Spear, Black Uhuru, Marshall Griffiths and the man who would become his mentor in the great Beres Hammond. By the age of 11, he vowed to join that elite group of singers one day and also discovered that he had an outstanding and powerful singing voice. After winning a local talent contest in Montego Bay, he left home at the age of 14 and moved to Kingston to make his dreams come true. He would settle in the Papin area and took the stage name of Little Melody. In those streets, he quickly got noticed by the David House crew, which was then headed by reggae artist Capleton. It was Capleton who would change his stage name from Little Melody to Jack Cure, and in no time, he got noticed by producers as well as his fellow artists in Kingston as a powerful artist on the rise. He became close friends with another teenage upcoming singer called Miguel Orlando Collins, who went by the stage name of Sizzler Kalonji. It would be Sizzler that would convert Jack Cure to Rastafari. By 1997, Sizzler had been signed to Exterminator Records and had become a star, and both lads would do a song together called King in This Jungle, which would turn out to be a hit and became Jack Kier's breakthrough track. The song was produced by lovers rock legend Beres Hammond and was released under his Harmony House record label. Hammond had been blown away by Jack Kier's talent and took him under his wing, mentoring him in the studio and producing his music. Over time, he began to sing on records for big labels like Exterminator and Green Sleeves. And by 1998, Beres Hammond was taking him along on international tours across Europe and several Caribbean islands with his band, Beres Hammond and the Harmony House. At barely 20 years old, he was among the fastest rising stars in Jamaica when his life would change forever. In November of that same year, a woman named Susan Ferguson, as well as her aunt and a male companion, were kidnapped outside of the Flamingo nightclub in Montego Bay. Both women were sexually assaulted and robbed. A few days later, Jaquiel was pulled over at a police checkpoint and after being identified by Susan Ferguson, he was taken into custody and charged. He would maintain his innocence and strongly deny the allegations. The victim didn't visually identify Jaquiel but affirmed that she recognized his voice. And in April of 1999, he was sentenced to 15 years for the crimes of robbery and sexual assault and he was sent to the St. Catherine Adult Correctional Center and after serving five years, it appeared that Ja had sent him a lifeline. He was transferred to the Tower Street Correctional Center which had a digital recording studio and on the strength of a program spearheaded by one of the senior prison officials, Jaquia was offered the opportunity to record new material while behind bars. Inspired by his experiences, he sang his heart out and recorded several records, many of which would top the charts while he was still in prison. 
Jakio would make history as the first reggae artist to score consecutive number one hits from inside the walls of a prison. In 2004, he had two of the biggest songs in Jamaica, In True Reflections, which incidentally was written by a prison warder, and the track Longing For. As his songs flooded the airwaves and gained traction, both locally and internationally, many people began to take up the campaign for his release. The pressure bore fruit when on July 28, 2007, Jakio became a free man after spending eight years behind bars. The day he was released, he famously said that the only goals he had left in life were to spread love, promote peace and healing with his music. And soon after he got out, he would perform at a sold-out concert at the Trelawney Stadium, marking a glamorous return to music. And he would also release his comeback album, True Reflections, A New Beginning. He went on tour and scored at least eight consecutive sold-out concerts in Europe and the Caribbean. His music flew up the charts, single after single. Jaquiel was simply on fire, with so many albums and singles going up to number one. And four years after leaving prison, things got even better as he got married to TV host and producer Camilla MacDonald in 2011, and the couple would welcome a baby girl in 2012. Things would get even better as his album, The Cure, was nominated for a Grammy in 2015 for Best Reggae Album, but narrowly lost to Morgan Heritage. However, there is a popular saying that maintaining success is harder than simply attaining it. After what had first looked like the end of his career and life due to his prison sentence, he had made one hell of a comeback and emerged as one of the biggest reggae artists on the planet in the new millennium, even outshining and surpassing his peers who seemed to have left him behind while he was locked up. But just as sharply as he had risen, things began to take a downward turn. Cracks began to show in his marriage just after four years, when his wife Camilla left him, citing physical and domestic abuse, and the couple would eventually get divorced. He would also begin to get into trouble with the law on a regular basis and would record heated beefs with various artists that were well publicized, including those with Beanie Man and Popcan. His fight with Popcan supposedly started over a woman and both men would allegedly draw weapons on each other during a face-off. Jacquier seemed to have let success get the better of him and would display plenty of out-of-control behavior. A voice note surfaced in which he was overheard disrespecting DJs and sound crews. And in December 2020, his fans were shocked when a video would surface in which he was recorded in a verbal altercation and assault of two women who had refused to sleep with him. And he also began to make questionable posts on social media, boasting of his achievements and material possessions. But despite all these flaws, his overwhelming talent still made him a super bankable star that would fill up stadiums and concert venues all over the world. But things would come to a head when on October 1st, 2021, his 14-year unstoppable ride would come to an abrupt end in a very violent and dangerous way. Jaquiel was in Amsterdam to do a show organized by Jamaican-born producer Nicardo Blake, popularly known as Papa. A dispute broke out after the show when Papa refused to honor his own side of the agreement, which was a performance fee of 5,000 euros payable to Jaquiel. And according to Jaquiel, Papa had been talking tough and simply refused to pay him. Jaquiel would send an angry voice note stating that he would stab Papa for all the disrespect and he would time him at Dam Square in Amsterdam and knife him in the stomach. Jaquiel was arrested, charged to court and sentenced to six years in prison for attempted manslaughter in March 2022. He had just finished recording the songs that were to make up his album Undeniable, which was eventually released in February 2023. And soon after its release, he would grant an interview from behind bars in which he apologized to his fans, affirmed that he was in high spirits and promised to tell his own side of the story. Jaquiel is behind bars again and unless he gets an early release, he will be out of jail by the time he is 50 years old. He's confirmed in many statements over the years that he was an angry child and when you really examine the circumstances of his early life, you can get an idea why. Not to excuse his excesses as an adult, but it's only fair to also look at the root of a matter and not only the fruits. Jaquiel made a stunning comeback after his last incarceration, so I'm rooting for him to do the same all over again. It's my sincere prayer that after spending a significant portion of his life in legal trouble and jail, he can truly turn his life around and come out from jail a changed man. So there you have it. Thank you for watching the video today. Please leave a like, subscribe, and until next time, Jobless.